Ever wondered just how deep Star Trek goes? Do you spend your time thinking about the Trek multiverse? Hi, my name is Kyle, and this is Trek Expertise, where we discuss all things Trek. Today's episode, Star Trek and the Game of Technology Prediction. To begin this topic, we must first correctly cast Star Trek in the larger realm of science fiction. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Sci-fi is an idea-driven genre. It depicts worlds that might be, and the potential disruptions that new technologies, alien contact, and socially progressive or alternative ideas might have upon the human species. I'm very pleased with your progress, Frank. Planning this burglary was a great idea. Thanks. Pamela Sargent describes science fiction as a literature of ideas, and she is absolutely on the money. Science fiction's subgenres are various, and each subgenre serves its own particular function in testing new ideas. Hard sci-fi, for example, speaks to scientific accuracy first and foremost, and is exemplified by greats like Arthur C. Clarke and Kim Stanley Robinson. Soft sci-fi touches on the social sciences and is very well represented by greats like Ursula K. Le Guin and Ray Bradbury. Other more nuanced subdivisions, like alternate reality, dystopia, dying earth, feminist sci-fi, get away from her, you bitch, and steampunk speak to more specific topics. Star Trek, however, is all of these sci-fi genres and none at the same time. This is because Star Trek notoriously borrows from across the entire science fiction realm, from the very obscure to the most popular, in order to produce new material, and combines it with original ideas that come from within the franchise itself. Part of the appeal of the franchise is precisely because it draws from so much varied science fiction material. We are constantly searching, not just for answers to our questions, but for new questions. In this way, Star Trek is more like a pop culture science fiction medium through which more obscure, more true to form science fiction ideas combined with original Trek concepts bubble up into mass awareness. One of the ways Star Trek introduces new concepts to society is through the game of technology prediction. Or should I say technology guidance? I'll explain. Back when Gene Roddenberry and his fellow Trek creators were laying down the foundations of this most beloved adventure, Star Trek made some fairly bold predictions as to what technology may look like in the future. Computers so smart that you could simply talk to them. Hello, computer. Hyposprays. Cell phones the now outdated tabletop computer, flat screens, Bluetooth, tablets, and doors that just plain made sense. And there were some flops, but hey, you win some and you lose some. How many iPads does one need anyway? But like other science fiction in the world at the time, Star Trek was in the game of predicting the human future. However, a funny thing happened since the 1960s. Star Trek became popular, like really popular. Now, whenever significant innovations pop up, news outlets are extra quick to connect the new idea to Star Trek in some way. This is no accident. People that happen to be fans have gone out and invented things and started companies that keep Star Trek in mind. It seems the franchise is so popular that, instead of Trek predicting the course of human technology, people are emulating the show. Star Trek is directing the evolution of human technology. The more people that watch Trek, the more likely that this kind of technological guidance will occur. And this is the way that science fiction works overall. Someone, say Robert H. Goddard in the year 1899, for example, reads a science fiction story, let's say H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds, and becomes so inspired that this someone begins to wonder and to dare to dream, and then act on that dream. Mr. Goddard is credited with building the world's first liquid-fueled rocket and the first multi-stage rocket, two crucial ingredients to humanity's Apollo landings. H.G. Wells helped to ignite Goddard's curiosity about what space was. NASA would not be possible without Goddard. Indeed, there is a NASA facility named after him. I'm a leaf on the wind. Watch how I soar. So, it's not like science fiction is predicting what will happen. It's more like science fiction creators are extrapolating a possible future. And the more popular a work of science fiction is, the more likely it is that some aspect of that extrapolation will be chosen by the masses to become reality. People vote through consumption on the concepts that most inspire them, and then some of those people choose to emulate those concepts. It's a kind of feedback democracy, in a way. No work of science fiction best typifies this relationship better than Star Trek, probably the most popular science fiction anything in existence. 
over 700 episodes across 30 seasons, 12 movies, over 2,000 novels, short stories, and graphic novels, along with countless fan-produced works not officially sanctioned by the powers that be, and hundreds of annual fan conventions around the world. Thanks to Star Trek, people out in the world are competing to invent tricorders, hard at work building universal translators and the Star Trek computer, racing to make practical the almighty game-changing replicator, playing around with the idea of transporters, hoping to make calligraphy into the greatest gaming experience ever, even reviving nearly extinct technology fashions just because they can. What makes all of this sci-fi stuff so possible? Simple. People are choosing the possible future they most want to emulate, and that future is looking more and more like the final frontier. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to suggest future topics in the comments below, and keep an eye on us for future installments.